the prices have started coming down, partly because uh, we're just getting into the harvest season now. Uh, and the two commodities that really spiked the inflation is rice and sugar. Right. And it is very clear that uh, uh, already rice, uh, price of rice is coming down. Uh, not only that, uh, you know, um, we have a clear benchmark, which is uh, inflation in Zanzibar, uh, same monetary f um, authority, but uh, they managed on the food side. Right. And the peak had reached 23%. Uh, end of April was 9.9%. So we expect as food prices go down, our outlook is that uh, by December, we would be back in the single digits. So when do you see then inflation bottoming, bottoming up? Um, oh, uh, that will be next calendar year, okay. uh, where we think it should get down back to the uh, range of 6 to 7%. Uh, going sometimes all the way down to 5% where it has been. Okay. So our medium, medium term target is inflation between 5 and 6%. Okay. So now we've got uh, currently your uh, rate sitting at around 12%, 12.5%. So in essence, we are in negative territory in terms of real interest rates. How, how long are you likely to maintain that or are we likely to see you perhaps maybe bump up that interest rate up again? Well, um, the, the bank rate is really indicative. Uh, most of the rates, actually, that uh, banks are charging are way, way above that. They are real, they're yeah. positive. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, the interbank rate has been influenced a lot more by the state of liquidity. And uh, when now we have tightened uh, liquidity, that rate has also responded. But the most recent number is uh, down now to 13%. Okay. Uh, that's the interbank rate. Uh, we have not been doing repos um, uh, the last, I think, uh, two weeks. Okay. And the main reason is just uh, liquidity is so tight uh, that uh, we, can, we cannot uh, withdraw any more liquidity from that. Okay. So we did reverse repos right. um, three, four weeks ago. Uh, to help banks get more liquidity. Uh, at that point, the rates were extremely high. Okay. Uh, they were being charged over 20%. Yeah. Okay. Now, with that outlook for inflation then, where do you see uh, this interest rate cycle uh, peaking? Well, a lot of it uh, will go with inflation. Right. Um, my expectation is that um, uh, the... Uh, the interest rates generally will go down uh, uh, over this period, uh, I mean in the remaining period in this year. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let me just mention one thing though. Notwithstanding these very sharp movements of uh, interbank rates, uh, the lending rates actually have tended to be much more stable. Uh, on average, uh, they only went up from around 14 and a half to about 15 and a half percent okay. uh, lending rates okay. um, uh, and for those uh, uh, customers that have good rating they could even get money at 12 13 mm percent -hmm. so uh, I think uh, we haven't had the explosive sort of uh, increase in uh, uh, actual customer rates yeah. as uh, we would have feared. Like we saw in Kenya, for instance. Now, you are managing one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. In fact, one figure that I saw suggests that Tanzania is the fastest uh, growing non-oil economy in Africa. How difficult then is it to manage the, that interest rate environment when you've got growth at such a fast pace? What measures are you taking? Well, um, one thing is um, uh, we have not gone um, very rapidly up with the bank rate uh, as our neighbors have. Right. Partly we were conscious of the fact that uh, you kill growth on the other side yeah. uh, by getting rates to be excessively high. Yeah. So we took a medium term uh, sort of uh, frame uh, and kept the rates at levels that are consistent with the, uh, with the growth rates uh, as such. So I, I think um, we are still able to maintain uh, the growth rates partly because most um, um, uh, producers are able to get money at reasonably stable rates. Right. 
as I mentioned, yeah. lending rates have been fairly stable.